Hey guys, Jim here, JCRC. Hope everybody's doing well. And I'll just show you how to take apart the motor and what I did to uh, fix this thing. But anyways, you're gonna obviously need to take your motor out, uh, remove your pinion gear from the end, and just be careful you don't strip any threads while you're doing that, just take your time. There are, let's see here, one, two, looks like uh, three screws going into the end of the can. It's 1.5 millimeter and just take your time with this and make sure your driver is really well situated because trust me these things strip out super easy. Been there, done that. Don't really want to do it again. So if there's like a bunch of dirt or crud on there just kind of clean it out first maybe with a pin or something and uh, then you can put your driver on it and make good contact. Make sure it's uh, seated in there good. And again, three screws. Try not to lose them. There we go. Next thing we'll do, if you have a bit of a thumbnail, if you do not take maybe a really small jeweler's uh, flat bladed screwdriver, something like that, and just start prying the end of the can off. And of course, you start to have stuff uh, coming out at you here. So, which way did that go? Yeah, just kind of take note of uh, how those little washers were situated. And I don't have my headlamp thing on, so this is super difficult for me. Okay. In other words, I can't see anything without the headlamp. That kind of sucks. But hopefully that's showing up for you guys. Okay, it looks like there were um, there was one little just round circular washer at the bottom for me, and then two uh, other washers. But when you do this, just pull it off more carefully than what I did. <laughs> and then take a note mental note to yourself uh, the positioning of these things before you put it back in but yeah whatever um, anyways we'll just test this bearing while we're here yeah that bearings uh, spinning no, no problem it's not locked up if it was I would change that out in a heartbeat definitely so um, yeah there's the inside of your can and here's the other end so what we're going to need to do, I really thought, oh yeah, I was right. Excuse me. There's actually uh, two of these circular washers that look like that. And then there's two other uh, kind of like concave washers that are there also. So just take note of that. Um, we're going to grab a hold of the rotor and just pull it out. And oh my goodness gracious. You are, you're definitely in there. Okay. Rotor is out. Okay, so what I found up found out being the issue with mine was when I pulled it out, it was gunked up with a bunch of grit. So literally, this rotor has super tight clearance Going, going inside of here, um, which I can't remember what you call those little channels in there. Um, at the moment, it's escaping me. But anyways, uh, here's the here's the rotor, and and there was so much grit built up on there. There there was grit wedged on um, up, apart from each other, adjacent to each other, and it was locking up the rotor. So yeah, if you run your RC you know whatever you're running your your truck or buggy or truggy whatever the thing is and you're running in a dusty gritty sandy environment like i am you could have this happen to you and your your motor will be fine it's just mechanically uh locked up in the rotor there so at that point without further ado use your trusty old well this is what i did i just sprayed down there hopefully that's showing up 
with uh, brake cleaner. But I guess technically, since it's like an electronic piece of equipment, <laughs> you should probably use like, a, like an electronic uh, parts cleaner. But anyway, just you take your spray can, do this outside, obviously. Spray in there rigorously, and you're going to have like a ton of junk come out of there. Um, and then you even take your finger. You know, I mean, if you got really big fingers, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to use something else. Like I could get my pinky down in there, so that was cool with me. You might not be able to, so you guys have to just think of another idea or just keep blasting the thing out. Just don't use any metal in there, for goodness sake. Um, just be gentle with it, but you will clean out um, all those little magnetic uh, channels in there. Sorry, I don't remember the term for those the, the, those notches in there. And um, without further ado, yeah, you definitely clean off the rotor really good also. Same procedure, just give a really good spray down. And um, you can even check out the other bearing, make sure it's uh, f you know moving freely and, and spinning there and not locked up or anything. Hey guys. Um, yeah, I thought that was the fix. I, I started running the motor again, and it got really, um, really hot on the rotor to the touch, and it sounded kind of grindy. I thought the bearings were good in the motor. One was, one was not. <laughs> I think when I was moving it, I just kind of fooled myself into thinking it was moving, and I was just uh, spinning my, my finger on the bearing, which was stationary. But anyways... Um, yeah, one of the bearings was totally locked up. These are, these are the original bearings. As you can see, non-sealed. Okay. Um, I am replacing them with these sealed bearings. Hopefully, as you can see the difference. Um, sealed, non-sealed. It's got a rubber sheath on it to uh, protect it from dust, dirt, debris, etc. So, um, getting the one out was really not too difficult. Um, <clears throat> it pretty much just lives right down, down in there. And um, all I did was use a uh, small flat-bladed screwdriver, which, uh, of course, I don't think I have that sized one with me in front of me. But it was a Harbor Freight one, yellow-handled, flat-bladed, and I just took it went right through this center hole, of course, after the rotor was removed, um, and just punched it out that way. So that was actually pretty darn easy. However, we ain't done yet. The next one was, was in here, and man, that thing was wedged in there at the end of that uh, rotor cap. So I tried a couple different things. I tried to, um, I got the center bearing uh, cold, and then I also applied heat with the uh, soldering iron on this on the side of there. I mean, I got this thing super hot. And then I was trying to pry it out like with like a prick, so uh, with a pick, excuse me, and um, just wouldn't come out because I thought that would expand the metal and oh, it'll just pop right out. Nope, no such luck. So what I had to do is while the bearing was in place, God forbid I put that thing back in there. Um, when it was in place, I just took a drill and drew a pilot hole down through the center of the bearing through that aluminum uh, end cap. So I had a mark, a smaller one, and then I flipped it over, put on a block of wood, and then made the hole bigger um, through the pilot hole to where I could just see, you know, some of the shiny part of that bearing there. And then I, uh, I tapped it uh, with the screwdriver. Just I mean, the light tap popped right out. Um, so to me, <laughs> that's the only way I know how to get it out. It seems kind of brutal, but um, it worked. Hopefully that'll be the fix. I, I even asked the hobby shop if they knew how to get it out, and they were like, uh, I think they just send stuff like that back to Arma and warranty it out is, is my guess. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that they didn't, it really didn't say. So um, anyways, again, for the... For SBLX, that would probably apply to both, uh, well, obviously the Outcast, 
and uh, probably the uh, oh shoot the Creighton the Creighton 4S BLX uh, Armas that is the size of a bearing you'd want to use uh, you don't I mean you don't have to necessarily use Techno but it was a rubber sealed one that they had on hand and hopefully hopefully that's showing up for you guys I'll read it anyways Techno TKR BB 05 134 ball bearing looks like it says 5 by 13 by 4 and uh, main thing is don't put a non-sealed bearing back in there please <laughs> if you've already gone to this much effort so we're gonna try to get this down here so we need to get this down there this is probably gonna be the most challenging one because we're kind of working all the way down on that end and uh, I wonder if it's gonna hit like a magnet in there and be really awkward who knows oh gosh it almost fell right into place oh wow okay Let's see what happens we'll try to get it yeah 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 okay that looks pretty good right there just a little little tap I'm not going curb bonkers on hitting that thing I actually just had some good luck because that almost like dropped in where it needed to be. Wow. Okay, so I think we're good to go on that one. Looks like it's flush to me. Make sure I hit every little. Actually, I'm going to slightly, lightly tap. It's going to turn and smack it with another screwdriver just to really make sure that thing's seated. And I'm, I'm not hitting the insides. I'm hitting the outer race portion of that, so it should be good to go. It's a piece of dust in there. Yeah. It looks, it looks pretty flush. So I just want to be sure I get this right. Okay. Good enough. I'm not going to go completely bonkers on that. So, uh, and that's the one. Yeah, this is the one that was toast. And it was locking up. And oh my gosh, this rotor. Oh my god, this thing got so stupid hot. The uh, the shaft. Oh my god. Okay, let's drop this thing down here. Hopefully you guys can see. There we go. I'm gonna push that little sucker down in there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's about as far as uh, she's gonna go. Okay, so that's almost on the ready. And where'd my other bearing go? Oh, okay. This needs to go in here. This could be really fun. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's easy. Oh, of course it's not going to be easy. Okay, so. Yeah. Just try to really. Okay. It's going to need... A little coaxing. And again, I'm just kind of being gentle on this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Picker. Got you. So that's in there. Yeah, it looks pretty. Just gotta make sure this stupid thing is flush. I don't know, man. I might hit it just a hair more. Just 
just for good measure. Oh yeah. I'm digging that. That's much better. Okay, I'm glad I did that. Okay. So, oh yeah, I'll go back to our little washer thingies here. Okay. God, these things are fiddly, let me tell you. Do try to make sure you're actually getting these on there and not dropping the bleeping things down inside the motor. Okay, I think. See, this is real finickety for me. Okay. And it's all gonna go one way. This is just a matter of push and wiggle. Take a minute. There we go. Let's spin this. Oh yeah, I mean it feels okay. I don't have any issues with that. Yeah, I mean the bearings. Got brand new bearings in here. This thing should be good to go, man. All right, again, 1.5 millimeter going right in. And when we get done, I'm going to take a piece of tape and seal that up again. That may be very crude. If you have a better idea, Feel free to let everyone know what you did. We'd be glad to hear from you. Or post a video of it. Whatever. Okay. So I guess the only thing left to do is to uh, put power to this thing. <laughs> Don't waste a darn moment of truth, man. Seriously. Okay, let's, don't go anywhere, hold on. Okay, so um, like I say, last time I did this and the thing got super hot, super quick, so. Oh yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, right off the bat, um, it sounds different than last time, so this is a good thing. Yeah, and the rotor is not uh, stupid hot either. Before, I just did it that much. I touched the rotor, and man, that thing was easily, uh, I don't know, probably 180 degrees. Just give it a guess. Let's just run it for a second more. I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, 
don't smell anything burning either. Mm -mm. Well, it's got to be better than before. Before it wasn't even working, and the bearings were seized up, and it had dirt in it. So, as far as I can tell, that's a fix. Um, feel free to ask any questions, comment, like, subscribe, hate, dislike, whatever your thing is. And thanks for watching, guys.